Hello and welcome to this month's IRQTC Training Tips newsletter. I'm Brian. Thank you so much to everyone who has contacted and communicated with us over the past month, giving us such incredible and wonderful feedback on everything that's happening here at the IRQTC. I'd also like to especially thank the people who've gotten the survey back to us that we sent out just last week. You know, so many times when you're part of an organization, uh, we say things like, oh, why, they, why don't they do it this way? Or why, they, why don't they do it like that? Well, here's your chance. For, you know, at the IRQTC headquarters, we really appreciate what you think. What's important to you as professionals and as people. Our mission is to help holistic-minded, therapeutic professionals improve their life and improve their business so that they can be of higher value to their clients. We really want to know what you think so that we can produce the best programs and tools to enhance exactly that, your professional life and your personal life as well. So please, if you have an opportunity, click on the sidebar and take three minutes to fill out that survey. Great, thank you. Now, our Training Tips newsletter for this month was inspired uh, by a discussion that we were having with other therapeutic professionals about balance and sitting versus standing. Kind of a two-part question. One of the questions was, is I have an elderly woman that I'm working with and uh, she's very wobbly on her feet. Is working in Tai Chi and sitting, is that gonna be valuable for her in standing? And quite, the answer is absolutely yes. When we work on Tai Chi principles in the seated position, we build foundation skills and strength that can then be advanced into standing. Part two of that question was, or I think led to, many of us believe that working in standing is superior to working in sitting when we talk about balance. And in some ways that's completely right, and in some, place, some ways that's not right at all. <clears throat> Especially if we have people who are very wobbly on their feet. And so we get these wobbly people up on their feet, and we expect them to improve their standing balance. Unfortunately, when these people stand up, if they're wobbly and they are not confident on their feet, they trip into a reactive mode or a stress state because their first priority is to stay on their feet or to not fall down. So they go into protective patterns, compensatory patterns, their brain shuts down. And when they're standing up, it's just a matter of survival. They cannot learn new movement patterns. They cannot learn how to uh, incorporate skills or functions when they're standing up if they're afraid of falling. So especially for these people, building those foundations in sitting is really, really important. Now the next thing is that transition. You know that transition from sitting to standing? That was part of that question. If I'm working with people in sitting, <clears throat> excuse me, then how do I get them to transition into standing in that in-between place? So here's a couple of ideas on the Tai Chi spectrum. So let's go back to a chair. Here we are in our, in our chair, and let's review one of the uh, Tai Chi exercises that we do, which is circling. Remember circling, we're holding a ball, and then as we exhale, the ball goes away. As we inhale, the ball pulls back towards the center of the body. You notice with this, we're getting an anterior and posterior weight shift in the body. In breath, and out breath. You notice with the forward lean, the body is up tall still with that Tai Chi principle of keeping the spine suspended. So it's not a collapsing, it's a reaching forward so that the spine stays tall and simultaneously there's weight going through the feet, down through the feet. So you wanna bring that to the attention of your clients or your students. As you reach forward, feel the feet get weighted into the ground and at the same time feel the head get lifted up towards the sky. So in-breath and out-breath, weight pushing into the ground and lifting up and away. Because that's a Tai Chi, going in both directions simultaneously. So we practice this and we encourage people to, when moving forward and beginning the initiation of that stand, which would look like that, up through, that imagine pushing your feet down into the ground. Feel the ground underneath your feet as you push your weight down. You sink your weight down into the ground and simultaneously lift your head up into the sky. Okay? So we offer that Tai Chi cueing in that way with the simple circling practice. Even if it's off to the side with the diagonal practices that we do as well. In that case, it would be shifting weight more onto one foot. So we learn those uh, 
principles in the seated position. That's safe for people. Now, when people are ready to transition, use a bar stool, okay? Use a stool or a plinth or something that's a little bit higher. So now people, they're opened up just a little bit more. They have a little bit more weight on their feet and the bottom is just supported equally with the feet rather than sitting in a chair where your bottom is supported more. So now you're just lifting up a little bit higher. And if you can find progressively high surfaces to practice on, then go ahead and do that. Same exercise. Out and in with our circling. Feel the weight shift to the butt and then feel the weight shift to the feet. Feel the weight shift to the bottom. Feel the weight shift to the feet. Simultaneously now pushing the feet down and lifting the head up. Okay. Simultaneously pushing down and lifting up. Okay. Simultaneously pushing down through the ground. Really feeling your weight. Imagine your energy like roots going down into the ground. So the ground then begins to push back at you. Right? That's Newton's law as you do that progression. Okay, so we have a chair progression, and then we come to a bar stool or a plinth or something where you're just a little bit higher, where you can get that weight shift there. And then once people are ready, and we want to reverse some of this movement, we can also do that backwards circling. Remember, remember the backwards circling? And what I ask people to do now is as they circle backwards, they bring their, approximate their bottom towards that stool. So now it's that standing movement and then a sitting movement and a standing movement and a sitting movement. So now we're essentially working from the top down. So we have progressions that we work on. We start in that 90 degree chair, working progressively upward, move to the bar stool, progressively work a little bit higher, and then once you are comfortably in standing, and lots of times what we notice when people go to sit from stand, that they'll just collapse into the chair. And of course, we would like to see a little bit more control with that. And the way we practice that is again, doing this circling where we're just sitting back, approximating the chair because it's safely behind us that way, and then rising back up again. It's a wonderful way to build strength it's a wonderful way to get that chi circle moving in the front of the body as well. So I hope this month's training tips newsletter is useful to you. Please let us know how you're using it. Please let us know what you're doing in your clinic and how you're using these things in your own practice. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you at a training very soon. Bye-bye.